What is up, my peeps? It's Jay Campbell, your ever-present and aware host of the TRT Revolution podcast. My podcast is the resource for all things testosterone, anti-aging, and life optimization. Not only will we be interviewing amazing entrepreneurs on those subjects, but we also interview alternative researchers, authors, and scientists dedicated to understanding mankind's true ancestry. Please join me for regular deep dives into the fascinating lives and ideas of these incredible people. As a TRT Revolution podcast sponsor, I highly recommend checked.com forward slash TRT Revolution. Because for the first time, you can get affordable blood testing from the comfort and safety of your own home or office. In fact, Checked will come to your home or your office and provide comprehensive blood work, an in-person physical exam, and a one-on-one consult with an expert medical director. To take full control of your personal health, please visit Checked.com forward slash TRT Revolution. And now... Let's get to the latest interview on the TRT Revolution podcast. Hey guys, what is going on? It is Jay Campbell with the TRT Revolution podcast, and I am extremely excited to be joined here today live in studio with Russ Scala from Precision Health and the Russ Scala YouTube channel. Russ is an amazing asset to the community from a TRT life extension anti-aging standpoint. He also works with veterans. I mean, Russ has been in the industry for literally 30 years in Winter Park, Florida, and he works with, you know, high-end guys. His network is pretty massive. Russ and I met about a year and a half ago on Facebook, and uh, I proceeded to start watching his videos, and then him and I communicate all the time. He's in a couple groups I run on Facebook, and Russ is just an amazing dude. I've wanted to get him on this podcast for a while. Um, I finally have had the opportunity to do so. So, Russ, man, welcome to the podcast. How are you, dude? Hey, Jay. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Awesome, man. I appreciate you joining, joining me today. So before we start jumping into the topics, and we've got like three or four of them that I really want to discuss, I really want the audience to find out more about you. So if you can, just kind of tell us, how did you get into this field? You know, what makes you, you know, what drives you to wake up in the morning and just say, boom, this is, this is my passion. This is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I get asked that a lot because most, you know, most people think my group is batshit crazy. So let me, let me walk through it. <laughs> You know, I started, uh, started working in the emergency room when I was like in high school. I was fascinated with metabolism and um, watching that kinetic environment when they were giving drugs and trying to start hearts. I ended up becoming a paramedic and I hit the streets saving lives, you know. I didn't realize at the time all the collateral damage it was doing to me, but I wanted to save lives, make a difference. I was given medication and emergency scenes you could imagine. Awesome. After that, I went over to the SWAT team and... Uh, Spent time, spent a few years on the SWAT team, went through the police academy and started um, looking at how stress, you know, damaged the body and all the emergency workers. So with my basic knowledge of physiology, um, I knew I had to get out of that community because I was drinking way too much. I couldn't handle all the trauma I was seeing. Right. Of course, I wasn't going to go to a counselor. You know, we didn't do that. We just drank. Right. Yeah, I was but, going to say, you were a real yeah, man. <laughs> and, I, you know, I moved. Uh, I was a lieutenant in charge of people and my hands started shaking on emergency scenes, dude. So if, you, if, there, if anybody sees any weakness in that group, you're done. Wow. So I, uh, I started doing triathlons. I moved to another community. And when I moved over to triathlons, I uh, started testing athletes, their hormonal levels and, and, and uh, blood work in 84 because I was given drugs on the scene. I ended up with a cardiac arrhythmia. I didn't know what it was. I'm taking right. care of heart patients. And then I started seeing heart arrhythmias in triathletes. So I started running testing on them. So that – that's been sort of ground zero of looking at how stress compromises the body and the data that I collected. And then obviously over the years, my skill set evolved to uh, be doing customized treatment protocols with TRT in the disease specific market, you know, brain injury, heart disease, uh, cancer, depression. So, um, you know, when I saw your book out there, I went, wow, this is, you know, I'm in customized medicine, personalized medicine. But when I saw your book, I'm like, I could use this book as a sweeping generalization across illnesses right so even before I talked to you I was sending people to your to your book because you dialed it in for folks 
you know? Appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I mean, it's, you did a good job, bro. So, thanks. Well, I appreciate it. Well, so, so talk a little bit about Precision Health and like, you know, right now, like obviously, thanks for the story. It's awesome to understand. We, I think we all kind of have similarities as far as like how we, what draws us to this, you know, and then what makes us tick as we evolve it. But um, tell, tell us a little bit about Precision Health right now as far as like the type of patients you're working with. Yeah, I, I'm sort of an 11th hour interventionist, my team. So if, if there's an executive that runs a $100 million company, can't get off the couch, and he's been to four or five doctors, usually I get a call. So, you know, and, and I sort of like that because if you think about it, it's, I'm similar to being a paramedic because of course during the week I get a bunch of different calls and I got to pull all the puzzle pieces together. And I'm blessed because I enjoy that. I'm not sitting in some cubicle writing code, you know, right. not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> so, you know, when I, when, I put my, uh, when I put my team together, I have doctors that work for me. I have neurologists work for me. Um, I end up seeing, you know, rehab and brain injury patients. And when I, when I rehabbed a brain injury patient over four years, we, we tracked all that data. And um, TRT was part of the rehab. TRT, testosterone, and growth hormone were part of stimulating neurogenesis. Right. So here I am sitting next to the two research neurologists. I'm like Luke Skywalker ready to take notes from Yoda. And they just said, Russ, you're way out on the tip of the spear, what you're doing. We just started looking inside the brain a few years ago in fMRI. So I'm thinking, right. holy shit. Right. So, so here we are. And, and you know better than anybody where we are. So, you know, my goal is to educate people with the Russ Scali YouTube channel. I want to get more content out there that, like your book. Um, Eric Topol's bestseller, The Patient Will See You Now, speaks directly to what you're doing, what I'm doing. There's going to be a massive paradigm shift in health. Right. And, and Jay, I think we're going to be the early adopters, man. Maybe we're not recognized yet, but man, we're on the tip of the spear. No, you're, you're, you're totally right. And um, I got to read his book. I mean, I, you know, people, other people such as yourself have told me about that book. It's funny because um, we were, we were, we were one of the guys, the marketing guys, a, a big copy guy that I work with was telling Dr. Osborne, Dr. Brett Osborne, you know, who I worked with for a couple of years and we're still friends, but we don't have a real business relationship anymore. But um to, to write something like that, you know, that this is the, re the revolution is obviously, as you just said, it is, is a personalized healthcare space and people taking ownership of their health because we both know that the establishment is, is done. They're, they're not going to do it. I mean, the Obamacare, you know, act, whatever you want to call it, you know, managed care, it's all, a, it's a debacle. It's a complete nightmare. I mean, there is no care anymore for anybody, regardless of where you're at, whether you're elderly, whether you're, you know, you're in your forties and you're successful, or you're just a 25 year old single guy or girl, there's, there is no care. It's like a tax levy. I mean, the only thing you pay for today when you have benefits is the quote unquote catastrophic, you know, it, 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 potentiality of getting rear-ended in a car or, or something happening to you. And then you need life, you know, life flight support services that cost a hundred thousand dollars plus. Right. Exactly. And, and, and you know, there's no health care though. I mean, no, you don't go to a doctor anymore and, 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 and expect to get treatment. You get a copay and then you get shitty service or shitty, you know, evaluation. And then literally two weeks later, you get a bill for 85% of whatever they just charge you. Yeah, and I think I don't think we were designed to go to. I mean, look at the Maasai tribe, the Aborigine, the Inuit. Right. They live up until their eighties, and they don't even go to a doctor. No, dude. I mean, I tell people this every day, and obviously, you know, we're we're going live, and I have plenty of doctors. So if you guys are listening to this, I love you guys. But when I hear stories about people who are sixty-five years old who are in good health, right, and they go to the doctor, and the doctor says they do a routine ultrasound or you know, a, a, what do you call it? And you know it better than I do. The scan of the heart. Right. You say there's a blockage. We need to perform surgery right away. I'm like, you don't even have anything wrong with you. You're 65 years old. You run three miles a day. This is a surgery that you don't need. Why do okay. you believe that you have to have this? Sur I mean, dude, my uncle, who's my dad's, you know, I love this guy, by the way. He's in Florida. He's in Jacksonville. I just got an email yesterday. He's 68 years old, two years younger than my dad. who just turned 70. Great health. I literally was with him last year in St. Simon's Island on a family reunion vacation. The guy runs, he's in great shape, never been in the hospital. He goes in for a routine and all of a sudden he's got a, he needs to have a stent put in. And then they want to do a stent. And then when they decide they're going to do a stent, and again, I don't know what it is with that generation of people that when the doctor says they got to do something, the lab coat God calls the shots. It's like, okay, I'm going to have a stent put in. And I'm like, you know, I didn't know about this, but then they go in and then they find even like a, a horrible, horrible blockage. You know how you know the story. And that we're, you're going to die. Yeah. We're going to do quadruple bypass surgery, and then we got to do it immediately. And it's like I see these emails going back and forth in my family, and I'm like, you know, these people are very smart people, but they don't know anything about healthcare. They don't know anything about medicine. And I'm like, 
no, you don't. I mean, what, what is going on? This guy is in perfect health, but you're right. Where we're at today is that the, the older generation, and I, I, I classify them as the boomer generation, if the doctor says it, then it must be so. But I was like, yeah, and I think, well, you know, and, and to just speaking of heart disease, let, let's say you called me yes tomorrow and you said, Russ, I got a blockage in my heart. I would say, well, Jay, since you ran and you're in good shape, you're going to have good collateral circulation. Right. If you're not having any chest pain, I don't want you to worry about it. Let, let's maybe monitor it. Maybe we can up your testosterone a little bit so your coronary <laughs> arteries will release a little bit more you know, nitric right. oxide. Let's right. maybe up your thyroid because heart blockages come from low thyroids called subclinical. You know what the cardiologists don't look at. So let's <laughs> not freak out and let's remember that the cardiovascular market, that, that surgery they do is an $80 billion business. I was about ready to say, dude. All right, so. But, I mean, I mean, you're so right, but like, again, it's like the education process. Like, how do you tell a seven, a, you know, I'll, I'll give a classification, and I know this is generalizing, but, but you know, a 60 to 70 year old person who's in otherwise good health, when the doctor says you got to do this, how do you combat that? Even as a, you know, as a non-medical person like we are with, with information, smart as fuck, how do you overcome that stereotype where, well, you're not a doctor? You know what I mean? Well, here, this, this happened about two weeks ago. A guy flew in in his Learjet. I don't really care how much money, but people make, but this guy had a calcium score of 800. He had calcium on his heart. Right. He came in to see me. I, I told him what we could do on the phone. I shot a video. It's on the Russ Scali YouTube channel. It's called uh, heart calcium. And I've been picking up heart patients since 84. So I don't care what cardiologist I'm in front of. I'm not going to blink. This guy flies in to see me and his cardiologist calls me and he immediately assumes and starts to bitch me out on the phone. So I, I bit my tongue and I just listen. And then I drip the science on him slowly. And then by the time the phone call, first of all, he called me out of the blue and he tuned me up. So my ass got tight. I was really pissed. Right. But once, once he did the research, he understood where we were going and he understood that we were doing things that he can't do. So what, just like you said, there's something called icon intimidation. You know, we assume that the doctor knows everything. If you've been taught that way since you're a kid, I always tell people, you know, we never think school teachers or police officers can do bad things. Well, let me tell you. And you I know, know man. They can. so we got this icon intimidation. So I tell my reps all the time, Jay, listen, we're in the religion changing business. Yeah. You must just tell them everything in that fucking Bible. It just, yeah, just, you, you have to overcome, you know, centuries exactly. of, of inculcation. And you're right. And you, there's only a select few that are open to it, you know, and we're going to get to this in a minute, the TRT, cause that's where this is going. But um, yeah, let, let, let's just get right into that. So, so the first point, and we'll just, I'll just pick up and I'll lead you on the question. So, the first conversation that I really want to have with you today, and you see this with all of your patients, and you see this in general society, and you, again, know this better than I because you've been in this game longer than me, is that we have somehow in the last, I'd say, two to four years entered into this society of, you know, emasculation of men, demasculization of men. We have low testosterone creeping up everywhere. It's not just generational. Yeah, we have 35 and 40 and 45 year old guys that are they're seeing, you know, super low levels of testosterone, but we're also seeing it now in you know, teenagers, you know, late teens, early 20s. So I call it, you know, this this the, the demasculinization of males, right? So we have essentially it's a low testosterone, high estrogen epidemic. What are your thoughts on that? What are the primary culprits in your opinion? I know you've read my book and everything and we can talk about that, but like you are working with patients. So what, what do you think is really truly leading to this? Well, okay. Yeah. And, and I just had some kids last week with high estrogen. So, you know, the, obviously I, I'm dropped into the second act of a third act play, right? Sure. So I put together, I put together some research and I hand it over to the family. Because I'm not going to battle with doctors every day. No. I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I educate the family, let them take, take charge. And, um, you know, there's a bunch of different reasons why a kid may have high estrogen. A lot of the doctors don't consider the environmental toxins. No, they don't. You know, what, what, you know the environmental toxins will elevate estrogen levels, as, as you're very familiar with. So as I start to break down a treatment protocol for a young kid, I got to remove the body burden. Okay, right. do you, do you use sexicides around the home. What kind of shampoo are you using? What's he brushing his teeth with? If this kid is chubby and he has high estrogen, remove every chemical you put on his body. Right. Hey, Absolutely. mom and dad, let's do that first. And now let, let's run some testing, like you would recommend, Jay. You do, do the, you know, the testosterone free and total. Sure. Let's look at his thyroid. And um, 
design a treatment protocol for this kid, including help his liver detoxify a lot of the junk in the environment. You know, we focus on liver detoxification as well, you know? So, so, so let's, so let's stop right there. Cause that's brilliant. We could talk literally for fucking three days on this. So, <laughs> so the reality is, is that yes, if somebody is lucky and fortunate enough and you, and you and I are, are, are only servicing a small percentage of very aware people. Right. So let's take the inverse of what you just said. So a 20 year old kid goes to an HMO or his PPO or whatever he has from his parents and he goes and sees a doctor. What the fuck is happening in that situation? Well, 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 there you go, man. You know, we're, we're, you know we're, it's, he's, he's taken down the wrong road, bro. There, there you is know, nothing. Just, you know what? You know what? I, I used this analogy the other day, Jay, and I don't know. Maybe it's not a good analogy, but when I worked severe auto accidents, I had 10 victims. Traumatic. The, I still got the visuals in my head. I had to walk by a lot of people dying to save the ones I could save. And in order for you and I to stay healthy, right. we need to do that, man. Because we can't save the world. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's it's just yeah. go to the ones and, and just keep writing the content that you're doing because what you're doing is going to go viral. Right. You'll be able to reach out to these kids and maybe somebody uh, we hook up with wants to do a, a book, a comic book that focuses on high testosterone. Right. Like Morgan Spurlock. <laughs> I mean, this, Morgan Spurlock with a handheld video turned fucking McDonald's around. I know, dude. Right. Uh, yeah, I know. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's funny that you just mentioned that because, you know, Alex, you know, Alexander Wan, who's in our groups and stuff, you know, he's, he's talking because they, you know, they were doing that thing McShredded and they're trying to tag it and all this. And now they're talking to ad agencies that, ran, that run McDonald's about possibly having him, because he's a brilliant kid, have him on a marketing campaign to re-engineer and, and to re-energize McDonald's from a standpoint of like, yes, you can come here and eat clean. But back, but back to what we were saying, you're right. So, so I want to keep going on this and lead it into um, TRT and Heart because I know you can talk very high level about this. Um, so, right. So we're in an environment now where, as you said, the chemical castration, the endocrine disruption, I mean, exactly. you cannot avoid it. Okay. Right. Unless you're living on a farm at 4,000 foot elevation in Montana, where the air is pretty much, you know, clear and, and, and free of, of God, God knows what. I mean, I guess right. really it's not, you're really not free of anything because of what the shit, the shit they're spraying in the skies. Know, but, right? But, but um, you know, other than that, I mean, it, it, we're in a situation, in my opinion, crossroads, and again, I refer to the book, it's hard to go to an average doctor, and again, not disparaging the medical community, but an average doctor and show him the research and the data and say, look, you got to make serious lifestyle changes to these young guys, otherwise, they're castrated. I mean, it's like I told you, like, I know so many, because I have a stepson who's 20 years old, but I know so many kids who are in their 20s, they're not, you know, sexually aberrant or anything. They're, they, they have low sex drive. I mean, can you imagine, remember back when you were, you know, 17, 18, 20-year-old kid? I mean, that's all we thought about, right? I mean, it's like today, they're, that's not even a thought process. So I don't know if it's <laughs> humans are evolving beyond that point or something like that. I don't see that. I think it's just a suppression of the endocrine system from, you know, a multi- it's under attack, right? Again, chemicals, high body fat, high estrogen, all these things are just a cascade that, you know, where's, where does one start in the other end? Well, I don't, I don't think the doctors are a target because when you walk into a doctor's office and we all, we all love our children. And when you take your kid into a doctor's office, there's three filters, his liability filter, right. his standard of care. <laughs> and Russ, I got to see 30 people a day to pay the bills. I love what you're doing, right. but it's not going to work. So, okay. So we don't go to the doctor's. We do what you do. We focus on the public and we educate families because I had a mom one time last year. She had a kid with bipolar and she said, this is a mother. And you know how mothers can get with their kids. She says, can you help turn around his bipolar? I go, yeah, but I'm not. I said, if you could get the psychologist, the psychiatrist, the endocrine, right. and if you could get five people in one room, I'll show up. Son of a bitch. She did. Wow. And, and the lithium they were giving him was too high of a dose. It was lithium. low on his thyroid. Lithium. Yeah. We, we turned him around. So, so my point is, again, getting back to content being the new oil, Jay, I really believe that educating the people and having them ask the tough questions, it'll help create this virus of knowledge that we're trying to, trying to do. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I agree, obviously. And, and, and you and I are both doing a, a, a bang-up job at that. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean you, you said something that I know my marketing people are going to pull out that was brilliant about, you know, what's really going on in doctor's offices today. And you're right, it, it, it is education because 
when people understand that, they're just not going to just automatically say, oh, my God, we got to go to the doctor. No, here, and here's another hot topic, Jay. You know, there's people – I have a lot of my friends right now that have aging parents, okay? Of course. So I'm, you know, you can imagine I'm always hyper and I'm thinking, I, I was sitting down drinking a, an iced tea and this guy walked by me in a walker. It took him five minutes to go by me. And I'm like, son of a bitch, why can't this guy, he got osteoporosis, he's on a right. walker. And I'm thinking to myself, I used to take people into nursing homes when I was a kid, you know, and watch them deteriorate. And then, you know, I would get their medication out of the refrigerator, the, 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 the white, the Wonder Bread, the orange juice and the milk. Right. And and they weighed about 100 pounds. And then fast forward 20 years, I'm at these anti-aging centers watching 60 and 70-year-olds on TRT. Yeah. So this is burned in my memory. So now this guy comes walking by me the other day in his walker, and I'm like, inflammation, low testosterone, you know, low growth hormones, the right. testosterone is out of balance. He's probably on, you know, a statin drug, which lowers his testosterone, lowers uh, his cholesterol, which right. he needs to make all his hormones. And I'm like, why can't this guy in America today go where, go one place where he could get taken care of? That's yeah. what's ridiculous. When you and I are sitting here with the knowledge that can turn a family around, that's just, yeah. that's ridiculous. Well, wow, very, very well said, dude. Awesome. That, I mean, that's a, that's a perfect analogy of what's going on. It really is sad. You're right. I mean, at some point, and, you know, I talked to, you know, my medical buddies, the guys do get it. And at some point you have to assume that managed care, whatever the hell do you want to call, you know, standardized, sub, I mean, subsidized ma uh, medical reimbursement, will figure this out and realize that they have to, you know, reimburse this in some fa fashion or form. Because as you know, right now, none of the legitimate doctors that, are, you know, I would consider what I call a progressive physician who administers hormones and age management, and all the other things, they don't take insurance because they're not going to play the game. It's just, it's, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, are, are we, is it, is it within 10 years or are we nowhere close to finding actually managed care, you know, reimbursing this? You know, I, I'm not, I, I don't know. I'm not privy to that information. I don't even research it because I just threw my hands up in the air. Right. I, I, I study trends like you do, and I'm thinking, okay, the pharmaceutical company companies, you know, they've been around a long time, and I'm watching what they're doing. So they take omega-3 fatty acids and turn it into a prescription. Amazing. So they don't have to spend a billion dollars on drugs. But, okay, that's good. Now they're getting people omega-3 fatty acids, which is great for the brain. Sure. You know, all the stuff it, it does. And then they take – Niacin, they take niacin and they turn it into a, a, a drug. So I believe greed, you know, remember Gordon Gecko? I think greed right. will force this to happen. Right. Because the pharmaceutical companies are a competitive, and a, a competitive environment. They're going to lean more towards functional foods now, exactly what, what you know about, and start trying to gain market share. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think the greed factor may, you just, just may play a role. It's no different than – all the smart guys at Blockbusters with 5,000 locations all over oh, the United shit. States trading on the stock exchange going, we are the men. And all of a sudden, some guy in the back like you and I are going, hey, you better be paying attention to Netflix. Not like, long. You'll never get the bandwidth. Blockbusters is gone. gone. Literally. So all 5,000 locations, gone. So right. we're Netflix, bro. I agree. No, I mean, I mean, you're, you're, you are preaching to the choir, brother. I can't wait to have you on another show. We're going to go much deeper. So I want, I want to specialize or focus a little bit now on things that you're doing related to anti-aging and helping people, you know, elderly, especially geriatric population. Let's talk a little bit about heart disease and testosterone. I want to go, we can go as deep as you want to go. I mean, obviously my book has, I think 53 different studies from the last three years um, on the relevance of, you know, the cardioprotective properties of testosterone and, you know, dispelling the bullshit, you know, and, and, and I don't want to talk too much about the bullshit because you and I already, saw, we are always talking about the bullshit, but, but how important is it for a 50 year old guy to, you know, to understand, I mean, again, for me, a 50 year old guy not on TRT is probably just unaware, but for a 50 year old guy who's not on TRT, um, and has issues and, you know, is, you know, so, you know, his doctor said that, you know, he needs to have an echocardiogram run or something. What, what, what is your, you know, treatment protocol for somebody that comes to you at 50 in that situation? Yeah. Great question. And, and that's the market that we want to go after. So let, let's look at it just heart disease. So I've been working on heart patients since I've been a kid, shocking them, trying to bring them back to life. And then I bring them back to life and they're still 300 pounds with low testosterone. So what was I really doing? I evaluated that, right? So now, of course, my skill set's improved 
take away libido and forget about muscles, what does testosterone do on a cellular level for the coronary arteries? And it does amazing things. There's a test out there called asymmetric dimethylarginine, yep. and that can measure the nitric oxide function on a cellular level inside the coronary arteries. So as a guy gets older and he, he gets a little chubby, that, that abdominal body fat blocks the arteries pretty quickly. Also, low testosterone can accelerate blockages of the coronary arteries. Amazing. So our focus is to get, you know, thinking about arterial dilation and thinking about every time the heart beats, Jay, it's equal to lifting 70 pounds off the ground one foot. Right. Think how long the heart's been beating since you're in vitro to you're 99 years old. Right. It's a pretty important muscle. Insane. Well, the heart has testosterone receptors on right. it. Right. Well, I mean, just knowing that, you would think testosterone would be, would be considered by the cardiologist. So, so Ross, stop, stop right there. Um, this is brilliant. Um, I want to go a little deeper. Tired of visiting a doctor asking for permission for a blood test? Tired of waiting rooms and being treated like cattle when you get your blood drawn? Have overpriced insurance premiums every single month and insane deductibles making you go nuts? Guys, you need to visit checked.com forward slash TRT revolution to take control of your personalized health. C is in cat, H is in hippo, E is in elephant, K is in kangaroo, and D is in dog. Checked.com forward slash TRT revolution. Guys, for the first time in human history, you can get affordable blood testing from the comfort and safety of your home or office. You can even get face-to-face -face blood work and health analysis with a licensed doctor that actually understands preventative medicine and isn't going to get you on medication, all from your computer or mobile phone. Guys, please take control of your personal health and go right now to checked.com forward slash TRT revolution. To order your personalized health service and trust me your health will never be the same so when 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 a patient comes to you same situation and says you know i think i should consider testosterone but i've heard all the radio ads i you know my wife is in, buzzing in my ear about you know it's going to screw up my heart what what is your overcome strategy to a patient who's literally petrified that using testosterone is going to subject him to a vascular event well, one of the things I tell them is, I said, listen, testosterone gets a bad name and you're going to have to get educated. Go to the Russ Scala YouTube channel and watch the video. If you don't watch the video, I'm not going to work with you. So that's one. I want him to awesome. get educated. Awesome. And then once, once he gets educated, then we can have dialogue. And the dialogue goes like this. Well, son of a bitch, how come my doctor has not? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm not shooting down physicians. I go, well, your doctor's really not trained in this. Right. Okay? So I said, you have to be the CEO of your own health. Right. I said, you got to take charge and ask the tough questions. If you're not on testosterone right now, what you're going through, you're going to compromise your brain and your heart over time. You know. So what? Brilliant, dude. I mean, this is awesome. I I, I really appreciate this dialogue. So what? So what? So again, what is your in your thoughts? Just generalizing right now, because I mean, I have my thoughts too. But you know, what do you think the patient population, or that fuck the patient population? Let's just talk about North America right now for fifty year old guys not on testosterone, how many of them are actually suffering because they're not on testosterone? Like yeah. literally just a rough approximation of men. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, you know, I think, you know, understanding the, if you study evolutionary biology and you study cultures, you know, why does a Maasai, you know, a Maasai tribesman have three wives at 70 years old because of <laughs> the of elevated? So if our body starts, if we start losing hormones at 30, right. The doctors have no problem prescribing thyroid. Well, if you have no problem prescribing thyroid, then why don't you prescribe testosterone? It's part of the endocrine system. So again, we're, we're going up against all the athletes, and I know who they were, and they gave testosterone a bad name. The president comes on TV and says, we don't want performance-enhancing drugs, and they gave testosterone a schedule. You know the story. Of course. So it's, it's an education thing. This is something – Testosterone is something every guy should consider as much as he considers taking his daily vitamin, man. There's no doubt, man. There's yeah. no doubt. There's no doubt. It's, you know, it's, I'm, I appreciate you saying that because where I wanted to go with this, and again, you and I literally, dude, we, we speak, we, we're cut from the same cloth, man. We are literally breaking bread here. But um, my dad is 70 years old. He's an ex-major league baseball player. And he is, in, you know, his 
great health. He still runs. He's destroyed both of his knees because he's like you, you know, had that five miles a day. I got to do it. You know, so he's had, you know, titanium not rods put in his knees and everything. But in, in normal speak, he's still in decent health. Won't touch testosterone. Won't he consider won't. it. No matter what, you know, his, his son wrote the greatest book ever written on it and he won't touch it, right? He's a, guy, he's a brilliant guy, a brilliant guy, very successful, retired, very wealthy. He's control, you know, he's, he's taken care of, and, but he just won't touch it. And there's so many guys like him and whatever it is, the fear, the ethical question, the morality issue, testosterone's illegal, it's a drug. I mean, it's insane how many men out there are not using testosterone and literally blocking everything right like their life could be so much better aging is truly metaphysical it's not it doesn't have to be experienced you're walking proof living proof i mean there are so many guys using testosterone who are in their 50s and 60s who are like literally like they're in their 20s and 30s they look better than most guys in their 20s and 30s right yeah i think well you know when it comes to family you know i was my dad my dad's an only old union leader from jersey Awesome, man. Awesome. When he was alive, that's awesome. Um, I got him on the testosterone therapy, and here, here's what happened. Um, he, I, I watched uh, diabetes just fucking kill him, man. It was right. watching him deteriorate, and he made the assumption. He goes, "This insulin is killing me." I go, "It is, Dad." Yeah. I said, "Why don't you just try this? You know, I want to, I want to keep you around, you know." And I gave him a, I got him on the testosterone therapy, and that week. In about two weeks, he cut his insulin levels in half. So Man. insulin, what does insulin do, bro? Here, if you and I were going to go on the Shark Tank, Jay, and we, we had a great, great idea, first of all, we would tell all those people in the, in, in that were going to be evaluating us that they're not getting good care. And then I would say, Jay and I are going to open up a clinic. It's going to change medicine. They're going to say, what are you going to do? I go, we're going to focus on the big three, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and, uh, and, and obesity. They go, what are you going to do? I go, we're going to bring down insulin. Because insulin's involved in all of them. And guess what? Testosterone is involved in bringing down insulin. Absolutely. Boom. Yep. So here, as a, a few of the diabetic doctors are using TRT therapy, I clean the chalkboard in their head, and they're like, God, Russ, you know, my clients are uh, they're cutting their insulin level in half. Because when you start injecting insulin, dude, you might, you're getting ready for a triple bypass. No, man. That, that drug is dangerous, you know? I mean, I mean it's – Again, I, I want to focus on you. The next top, the next podcast that you and I do, we can go down the whole path of med medicine. But I mean, I, my only comment about diabetes in, in medicine is, and this is a true statement, and you know this, the average doctor who literally works with people with type 2, and even now type 3, right, Al Alzheimer's and dementia oh. classifies type 3, literally thinks that giving their patients, that their diet should be mostly cons consisting of fruit. Dude. I mean, as soon as you hear that, it's yeah. like, dude, what the fuck? I mean, I mean, again, that's I don't want to go down that path and lose track of it, but it just the whole diabetes landscape with the doctors and the people working in it, it's so backward that it 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 can't even you can, it defies logic and reason to talk about it because you can't really address it, especially with the patients when you start looking at their, what they're eating because we work with a lot of these guys and you're like. Dude, what are you, you're eating three slices of watermelon a day. Well, my doctor says I can have three or four servings of fruit. I mean, I mean, it's like, isn't it sometimes you start questioning whether or not the actual goal is just to keep these people dependent on insulin and the meds? I mean, again, no conspiracy. I'll take my yeah. tinfoil hat off, but I mean, it's well, like. Yeah. Well, I think uh, number one here, here's another thing. And you get this, you're a business guy. Every diabetes center, every cardiology center I've been in, they're a business. <laughs> they got to pay their competitive advantage. They don't give a shit about helping people. They got to pay the bills. So, you know, and you and oh, I are going, God, we want to help people. Fuck that. They got to pay the bills and the eight doctors there. It's so, so true, man. So just knowing that, Jay, listen, this is just really cool. Back in the day when diets were, were a hot topic, Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers started. And they actually circumvented medicine and started helping people lose weight. Not, not, not the best way, but my point is, I don't want to say we're like Jenny Craig, but you know where I'm going. With yeah, this. no, I get it. You get it? You know what I'm course, saying? So, so, so Blockbusters is out there with 5,000 locations saying they're the best. I, you and I are basically, and, and the other folks that are in our little group are we're like. startup. Yeah. Yeah. What we have to find is that distribution channel, bro. Right. We got to find some of these guys that we know are going to take this by the horns, take our content and distribute it. Yeah. 
you know? It, it, book, it, it's book. happening, Russ. It's happening. Yeah. You know that it's happening. It is. It is. Obviously, it is. we have, we're living, you know, we can all live better, but I mean, we're living well now. And it's like you said, this is, we are tip of the spear. The, it, the times are changing. It just, we, you're right. It's, it's just about education, but you also have to pick and choose your battles, right? Like you can't go into, you know, an, you can't get into an argument or a conversation with a diabetes doctor who's been a diabetes no doctor way. for 30 years. No. Right, because no. that's this is the way we do things. It's like, telling, right. somebody, it's, it's like telling somebody the Koran's bad, or you know. Right. Mean, I, I mean, I think the final statement I want to get into PTSD here is, like Chris Rock said, right? Like the money's not in the cure, man. The money's in the medicine. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, exactly. so let's talk a little bit about um, PTSD. Um, I know you have patients. You, you work with a lot of veterans, which is amazing and admirable. I mean, I have a lot of friends that are veterans. I, I myself never served. Um, but you know, have deep and immense respect for those guys. So let's, let's talk about that, like where that's going right now, because obviously there's a, that's a massive, massive market. Um, I know, I know you're probably aware of Dr. Mark Gordon out here in, on the West coast, you know, he's got that big foundation for, um, I forget what it's called, but he works with a lot of PTS people and he does prescribe them testosterone. I'm not super sold on his methodologies and his protocols of TRT, but at least he's got them on TRT. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the PTSD market. Yeah, I used to I used to travel with Mark Gordon when he was uh, being sponsored by Signature. We were in Vegas, and um, you know, we that's where I kind of started dialogue with him in 2006. So let's um, let me set up a little scenario. Let, let's say you and I are uh, are going to you and I are going to join up, and our goal is to get into Delta Force. Okay, so you and I join up from our basic training, from when we go to the the range. When we eat and we sleep, Jay and Russ are never within five feet of each other, right? Now, you and I go over to Iraq, we see some bad shit, we kill some Hajis, and we come home, <laughs> and then something happens to us. When something happens to you or me, they send us home alone, away from our community. Amazing. Right? So herein lies the rub. I should be staying with my boys. Right. And that's what happens. That's where these, you know, you know, they were committing, you know, 22 suicides a week. Has anybody figured out? that moving these guys away from their community, you send a guy home and I, I, I never was in battle, but I've been in some bad situations. It was really hard for me to go to fucking beds, bath and be on my girlfriend. Oh, on shit, my man. Shift. All right. So we take these guys, you and I understand that we just been through hell and back. We can't really deal with the normal public, which we right. really deal with them now anyway. No. So, where do we go? And, and this is the beginning. So it's all about your community. I always say, look at your three friends. I'll, I'll tell you about your health, right? Right. So, okay. And then PTSD treatment protocols, it's very important to focus on TRT because the HPA axis is shot, bottom line. Gone. Okay? These guys are on a boatload of drugs and antidepressants, which we know damage the body on a cellular level. They're on opiates, which cause the opiate bowel. So we have multiple metabolic markers that are in the toilet with these PTSD patients and we're doing talk therapy, bro. Right. Talk therapy. Really? And these guys know it. That's why one of my guys used to work for Blackwater. They're going to hire as a consultant. Let these vets talk to somebody that's been in the shit. Right. All right. He's got his PhD. I read the, you ra I much rather a vet talk to him. And he was one of my clients. I, I met him. He was strapped. He's got a gun here, a gun here. And, wow. You know, and it took me a while. We had to do that dance. We finally became good friends. But um, very sharp guy. He's on my video. He's, uh, he did the PTSD video on the, on the Russ Scout YouTube channel. And I'm passionate about helping the guy. I mean, my history, cops, firemen, paramedics, war vets, we're the first one through the door, bro. Absolutely, and the last one yeah. to get taken care of. First responders, yep. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? So if anybody needs TRT, it's the PTSD group. And, you know, here's another thing. You want to get your hair blown back? Google the myth of mental illness. Right. Those labels I give people. Give me a break. A it's label. all, yeah, it's all the last 15 years. It's just completely made up and fabricated. It's just created to, like you said, to, to, to pitch pills. To yeah, could you imagine, could you imagine back in Freud's time, if we were back then, we're going, Jesus, we got to come up with some fucking diseases, man. We don't have any diseases. We got to, let's come up with a book. Let's come up with labels. And then we could, you know, in the 1960s, psychiatry was almost, they almost ran it off the map. They almost got rid of it. Well, I, well, I, well let me just... <laughs> So, so I have a, we have a client and he's on Adderall and, and my, my wife, you know, it, it, getting a prescription for Adderall in California is like trying to get into Fort Knox. Right. So, so this guy that is a client of mine said, am I, you know, and, and no one in my family uses Adderall and I would never let my kids ever touch that stuff. And by the way, my kids have never been vaccinated, never been sick a day in their life. 
Yeah. Never been vaccinated. Never been sick a day in their life. Eight and six, both off the charts intelligent. They, they, again, that's a whole other story for another day. But my wife, Monica, as you know, is a very successful, highly energetic person. And, you know, she's 44 now and she's just, she has ADD horribly. Right. So, you know, a couple of our doctor friends were like, look, just get a script for Adderall. They can't write it, of course. But so we, I get this guy who I consult with who says, hey, man, I got a doc. You know, you can call him and you can get a script for Adderall. So anyway, we go down the path. I literally called these people two days ago. I swear to God, Russ, it was literally like calling a licensed drug dealer, a legally licensed drug dealer. The woman, the watchdog on the phones was like, hello, blah, 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 so-and-so's office. I said, yeah, I'd like to make an appointment for um, – Dr. Wang, that's this guy's name. And, 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 and she's like, okay, who are you making the appointment for? Well, I'm making the appointment for my wife. Well, why is your wife not calling? I mean, it, it went like this. It went. <laughs> and then I, I'm not kidding you. I literally am not kidding you. I wish I could have been recording this conversation. She said, she said, okay, well, why does your wife, uh, well, by the way, Dr. Wang's not taking new patients. And I'm like, oh, he's not. I mean, that's, that's funny. This person is a patient of his and said that he is. Oh, well, <laughs> I swear to God, dude. Oh, well, we are taking patients for medicines. I'm like, excuse me, what does that mean? And then she says, well, what kind of conditions does she have? So then it went from, you know, to end this story, it went from, oh, well, we will script you or, you know, sell you Adderall if you come in. But just so you know, it's $580 for an appointment. Gotcha. Yeah, there you go. And then after that, it was, and we don't take, you know, insurance. You know, it's the whole path. And, and literally, I'm sitting there and I'm like, these people are licensed, you know, by the medical boards and the state of California. And they're basically telling me on the phone that for $510, they will write you a script for a, a, a powerful drug, a neurotransmitter stimulating drug that, you know, also has a lot of negative side effects. Just pay us and we'll do it. I mean, it's where does like the criminality and the legality start and end? You see what I'm saying? It's insanity. Yeah. What is going on in our psychiatric situation? It's like, um, yeah, it's like the pain management guys that deal with a lot of them. But, you know, for your wife with ADHD, there's a, there's a book called The Edison Gene. Right. That basically says Thomas Edison was kicked out of school. The guy, the PhD that wrote the book, basically says that, you know, people with ADHD are just basically very high functioning. Yes, they, yes, all of us. You know. It's, no, you don't need it. I, I mean, you don't need it. I mean, like, literally, she was investigating it for just in the event that we sleep two hours one night and we have to do something. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just like, you know, caffeine can only go so far. I mean, look at me as I'm talking to you, right? I mean, I'm literally, I sleep four hours a night. I'm, you know, caffeine in my water. Right. So it's like, it, it, it's just, it's unbelievable. I mean, the whole thing with the way the psychiatrists are just that profession where it's gone. I mean, it's like, they're just legal. Like you said, they were going to be done away with. So they just became drug dealers, right? They adapted. <laughs> well, um, with the neurotransmitter, with the benefits of, uh, like I've, I've helped people get off antidepressants. Those are, those are highly addicting. Sure. But I use the TRT like, like, like progesterone in women. Progesterone binds to the same receptor sites as Prozac and Xanax for the ladies. Right. Women, start, women start losing, you know, progesterone in their 30s, and then they gain a little weight. They become extra estrogen dominant. Their brain starts to go south. Bang, they get an SSRI that damages the prefrontal cortex. What do we do? So when I steer these women out of the, uh, out of the railroad tracks, just like the guys, a multifactorial approach, get, get them on the testosterone, the THD. Testosterone helps elevate dopamine levels. Absolutely. That's a win-win. You, you show me if there's a Prozac receptor site in your brain. <laughs> All right? But they're, you know, testosterone and natural hormonal therapy, the HPA axis, you enhance it. You enhance somebody's T3 levels, it's a natural antidepressant. Absolutely. So, again, people are lazy, Jay. They're lazy. Doctors, you know, doctors got two kids in school. I got an office I got to pay for. Right, it. right. I mean, it's just like you said earlier, you know, they got the 30 patients they got to get through that day. They've got to right. do this from an insurance subrogation standpoint. You're right. I mean, it's the running a business. It's sad. I mean, I mean, really, unless the guy's your brother or it's your best friend, the likelihood, you know, and that's why that guy wrote that book. I mean, you know, the patient, you have to be in charge of your personalized health care. Otherwise, you're done. I mean, and if you don't take ownership of it, you're just going to wait until you get sick. And then once you become dependent on the system, you're fucked. Right. I mean, well, think, think how many guys you, you, how many guys you educate with your book? Can you put a number on that? I mean, at this point, it's got to be hundreds of thousands. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, my goal is 50, 100 million. You know, that's where I want to take this because as we both know, I mean, what do you, so what do you think? That's a good question. And I want to get into um, ketogenic dieting and multiple sclerosis and, and how it applies because I know you work with those folks too. But I, what do you think the percentage of men in the world, all age groups right now, are suffering from low testosterone? Do you think it's more than half? Well, I mean, I guess I got, I got two clients that are in China right now, the, the air quality in China. Oh. You see what I mean? So think about all the toxins in the environment, bro. 
everybody's going to have low, low hormonal therapy. Now, what's going to happen, Jay, if we don't educate them, is uh, they're going to get taken down a bad road. And they're going to walk in and get, they're going to get, get taken by the hand by somebody in a lab coat that's a grim reaper. I mean, not, not intentionally. But Literally. They're, Literally. they're really going to get taken down the wrong road. So we got to educate them. And I, I'm not saying we got to do this tomorrow, but I really believe like what we're doing right now is going to go viral. And um, media, media people are going to get a hold of this. And they're going to start talking about it. Look what happened in the 1950s when they were only giving women estrogen. And then the Women's Health Initiative. And now it's come full circle saying hormones are good for the brain. So it's, right. an, evo- it's an evolution. Right. And it's all about good content. And, you know, people want good content. Think about, think about Netflix. Think about House of Cards right now. They said, screw you, the big three. I'm going to go on, on Netflix. And now these individual people, I believe that you're going to get on one of these stations that's going to focus on this. And they're going to end up getting big market share, big advertising. Because what you're doing, content is a new oil. Trust me, there's going to be somebody customizing their TV. With their, there's going to be a T, and it's a great name. TRT Revolution. There should be a channel for that. Right. Sponsored with a couple of million a year or, or five million a year to get this information into people's hands. Yeah, no, I, I mean, obviously, uh, we, we agree with you. Um, hopefully, hopefully, that'll be your company sponsoring me. <laughs> um, so let's get, we, you know, we've been doing it. This has been about a little, little, little less than an hour right now. I want to talk, and then we can just kind of finalize with just going where, where we're going as a big picture standpoint. But I want to talk about ketogenic dieting. I know you do. I've read a lot of your research and a lot of the stuff on your YouTube channel about it. I know you're, like you said, tip of the spear with that. Um, you know, the, before, before you talk about it, you know, we can go back, and I know you're very familiar with the Atkins diet and all that yeah. stuff, as am I. And, you know, obviously the research has really changed a lot, especially in the last couple of years with understanding the ketogenic diet. But um, there's a lot of misnomers and misconceptions. You know, the average person, especially like the person that's familiar with Atkins, you know, has this mistaken, extremely mistaken belief that they can eat unlimited amounts of food during the day as long as it's zero carbs and not get fat and blah, 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 blah. And there's this metabolic equation that helps, you know, you know, it's biochemically unique and all this nonsense. But um, talk a little bit about ketogenic dieting and, and how you apply it to, you know, folks that have neurological issues. Okay. The, key, the, the ketogenic diet has been, you know, it's, it, there's nothing new, same game, different players. Absolutely. You know, so, so let, let's just look on a cellular level for a minute. When DNA unzips, it needs essential fatty acids, essential amino acids for protein. On a physiological level, on a cellular level, inside the mitochondria, there's really no need for carbohydrates. Right. It's an alternative energy source. So just knowing that can tee you up for, you know, okay, this ketogenic diet may be, may be good for me. Now, right. you, just what you and I talked about, if you and I were on the shark tank, we had an insulin center. On a cellular level, when you have proteins and fats, okay, and you avoid the carbs, when you eat carbohydrates on a cellular level, it creates more free radicals. Mm-hmm. So from a neurological standpoint, I got a cop right now named Pete. Um, he's, on, he's on the YouTube channel. This guy went from a cane to a walker to a wheelchair in 10 years. Wow. He's doing low-dose chemotherapy, boots on the ground, just a real tough son of a bitch. So I'm getting his history, Jay, you know this, you see things like, so I'm getting his history. And I said, Pete, where did you work when you were with New York City Police Department? He goes, well, part time, I was working at a, I was working at a golf course. I go, what were you doing? He goes, I was spraying insecticide. All right. There you go. How about that? Now you see, did I have to educate you about environmental toxins, you know, breaking up the myelin sheath and slowing down electrochemical messages? No, you heard insecticides. You know what we do? Mm -hmm. We follow up with the TRT, bro. There you go. Well, let me just break it down a little more for you. So you got a wire, the plastic covering over the wire, right? Right. That The plastic covering is the myelin sheath. That unravels. When that unravels, that's MS. Well, yeah. guess what? MS is a, is a catch-all term for a right. bunch of things. Yeah, There's a lot a of things. There's no for MS. No. So now this guy has, you know, he has these lesions on his brain. He's been taking low-dose chemotherapy for 10 years. Wow. And he went from you know, uh, uh, a cane to a wheelchair, but there's no new lesions on his brain. So uh, again, you know, I see this stuff and I'm like, dude, I don't think, I don't think you need the, the chemotherapy. No, bro. Dude, no. And no I, I, obviously all my clients see my doctors, but I'm thinking, and I'm sitting with the family. I'm like, I said, Pete, I don't know. I think you got taken down the wrong road. You know, maybe we could do something. And I've done some testing on him. And as soon as I got him on the TRT, as soon as I got him on the testosterone, 
night and day for the first time in 20 years. I know, man. No bullshit. He started feeling better. His mood went up. His personal trainer called me. I, you know, his personal trainer noticed that he got stronger. Yeah. All right. He noticed that he could stand up longer on the walker. He could, you know what I mean? His all his whole life. This is a guy with MS takes chemo. You know, one one time a month. And he's already feeling the effects within a couple of weeks. He's on my YouTube channel under, uh, under MS protocol. So, Jay, for you and I to know moving forward, the neurological treatment protocols for the future are going to involve TRT. Right. right? Yeah, I mean, I mean you, hit, you hit the nail on the head. And in our next podcast, we're going to talk a lot more about insulin and, you know, living as Jim and I, Jim Brown and I have, you know, coined the, the insulin controlled lifestyle, right? Because that's the key to, that's the key to everything. As you said, I'll give you a case of point like Monica's dad, he's just turned 70 and we're watching him, de, you know, his, he's degenerating and it's really, really sad. Um, he's got a, you know, a, a morphine pump put in him. He, he was a guy who did not live a clean life. His first 35 years, he was a drop dead alcoholic. He died, you know, face down, drank himself like, you know, almost into cirrhosis, all those things, cleaned up his act. He's been 36 years or 34 years cleaned or whatever. Amazing dude. He's completely repentant, you know, got, got his family back and everything. Just a great dude. He's like, you know, I, he's like my dad and we're watching him. You know, I take him to lunch almost every day and, 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 and hang out with him. And yesterday, you know, it's getting to the point now, Russ, where literally he's. Yeah. Yeah. So what people don't understand, and, and I want you to expound on this, and then we can kind of wrap this up and we'll set up another one. But um, I don't think that many people truly understand about, you know, insulin sensitivity and how your insulin chemoreceptors that line the walls of your pancreas and literally are the foundational blocks. You know, obviously amino acids play a role and stuff like that too. But you talked about the myelin chief. I mean, once your chemoreceptors fail, because you've been living a life that has been full of inflammation, because you've been eating right. like shit, not building muscle, not exercising, having insulin resistance. Obviously, your hormones are out of whack, your thyroid, your testosterone, all that stuff. You only have a certain amount of life in those chemoreceptors before they fail, right? And then when they fail, it's like, I, I try to explain it in as lay terms as possible. It's like, it's a door hinge, right? The door hinge used to go and hold and then shut and then come back and, 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 and be in maybe a third dimension. And now it's just going like this. Right. And once that happens, there is nothing really that can be done, you know, especially if you're 70 years old and you've lived a life like this because, you know, your body's already broken down. But I, I think too many people don't truly understand that insulin and suppressing it and keeping it, I shouldn't say suppressing it all the time, but keeping it controlled is the key to a long life, right? Don't you agree? Well, I mean, like you and I, I like what you and Jim coined. You need to build on that. Yeah. Because I, I just said, if you guys coined that term insulin, you just affected the big four I just told you about. Exactly. You know what I mean? And that, and that's, and you had a little testosterone and that testosterone controls insulin and blood yep. sugar, Jay. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you may be stopping a guy from blindness, brother. With, I know, dude. You know, I tell people that all the time, man. I, I, it's amazing. But I mean, you know, you look at this guy, this, you know, Monica's dad again, he's a great dude and, and uh, he, nobody ever helped him. You know, he, he doesn't understand. And again, that, that generation of dudes really, even my dad is a smart guy, ex-athlete. You know, they don't know what good nutrition means. Right. Uh, but, but, but the reality is, is that, it's it, you're right. This is an educational process. We have to help people understand that depending on their body and their some you know their somatotype and whatever and their physical expression, they have to control their carbohydrate consumption. They have to suppress their insulin or keep it controlled and modulated. And like you said, with testosterone, with exercise, with all the things that you and I preach, you know, twenty four seven. Um, that's the key to extending your life. So, dude, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. This has been an amazing conversation. You're clearly a leader in the space and you know this stuff better than I mean dude honestly I, I talk to doctors every day and no one speaks at the level that you speak at so you know credit to you um we're gonna have another podcast you know what do you just give me some final thoughts on where you see all this going well like I said I think I think with with our skill set right now and keeping us healthy is uh keep cre keep creating the content keep brainstorming with your guys Somebody's going to pick this stuff up and distribute it for us. We're going to meet the right guy that'll see dollar signs and see our skill set. I mean, Jay, we're you and I right now in our group. We're players to be named later, man. Right. We just got to, we just got to align ourselves with the right right group. Stay away from the time wasters. Stay away from the guys that are data mining the skill set that we acquired, and, and and do some target marketing for you and me. You know, right. 
Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Well, man, listen, dude, I really, really appreciate you coming on today. I mean, this has been incredibly educational. Um, we dropped some very, very next level, in my opinion, information. Again, clearly, you know your stuff. Um, I totally agree with you. You and, I, you and I need to personally, you know, after the show, talk about ways that we can align forces and stuff like that. But again, dude, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, man. Awesome. And, and for everybody uh, at the end of this podcast, I'm going to have links to Russ, his YouTube channel, where you can find him online, how, if you're a guy that listens to this podcast and you're in desperate need, I mean, that's the guy you're going to reach out to Russ. So I'll have links to connect with him and, um, and we'll go from there. But brother, I really appreciate it, man. You have a wonderful day.